guys, it's Donna with Resale Tips and Tales, and today I bring you a tip how to make your own light box to do photography to sell items online. So I've been thinking about doing this for a really long time, um, but a lot of the online platforms prefer for you to have a clean white background, especially eBay, um, because things are easier to find on Google and other type of search platforms um, when it has the plain white background. Um, so I've been trying to find a way in order to get the proper lighting and the crisp whiteness um, with no wrinkles, no lines, no shadows. <laughs> So I looked online and a lot of resellers have this really awesome light kit, comes with lights and everything um, that you can buy on Amazon. However, it's $135 and I just did not want to spend that much money. So I am gonna show you guys a DIY budget friendly way that you can make one from home. So let's see if this all works out. So what you're gonna need are five to six sheets of foam board. This is just basic foam board I picked up at Walmart. Um, I believe it was 88 cents a piece. And this is gonna construct the cube for our box. Um, the other thing we're gonna need is a box cutter with a brand new sharp blade. Um, that way we can cut out windows on certain sides of the box so that we can put our lights. It helps diffuse the light so that you don't get the really weird colors from the light bulbs on your objects. I also picked up some masking tape so that we can um, use that for the seams and all of the corners to hold the foam board together. Also picked up a plain, non-shiny poster board, hard to see there, um, just a basic piece of that. Um, that's gonna be our backdrop on the inside of the box so that you don't get a line from the back corner. I also, while I was there, picked up a black one as well in case I have a white object that I want to take a picture of. It's good to sometimes have a black background. Um, also, I picked up featherweight interfacing. This is typically used by sewers to back their fabrics to make it a little bit sturdier. But what's nice about this is that you don't have to worry about tracing paper. Some people use tracing paper, which is an alternative, um, but it can rip, it can tear very easily, whereas this is going to be much sturdier. Um, so hopefully it will filter the light like I want it to. So that's really it for the structure of the box. Um, then I had to purchase the lights to go with it because I didn't have anything around the house, but you might have some things around the house. Um, I picked these up. They're just basic desk lamps, and what I loved about them is that they're adjustable, and they have a very sturdy base. Um, these were only $10 at Walmart. They also came in a black version, um, but I just liked that I could just adjust where they were gonna be. It also has an on-off switch, which I really love, so you can keep it plugged in if you have a safe place to do that and you can just flip it on and off with that switch. So I have two of those. And then I was wondering what type of light bulb. So I did a little bit of research online and I'm gonna try these. They are LEDs, what I hear is the best option uh, for the light bulbs nowadays. Um, it's not only energy efficient, but it also gives off the best light. The ones that I use here are called daylight, which is also what was recommended. And you wanna get the highest brightness you can possibly find. Um, this one in particular is 1650 so I'll let you know at the end of this project whether or not that that is bright enough um, I got the non dimmable because I didn't think that that would be necessary for this type of project so it was less expensive to do it that way um, so that is all that I have I picked up four bulbs however it says that they last 18 years so I may only need two of these <laughs> so here is the supply list and the cost for those items all right so let's get to it and let's start our project
Okay, so the first step in your project is you wanna cut your foam board pieces to the appropriate size. Now I am aiming for a 20 inch by 20 inch cube in the end result. So my foam boards are 20 inch by 30 inch, so I'm going to measure them and cut them to the 20 inch by 20 inch right now. I thankfully have this nice, really big, long ruler. I know it's clear, it's kinda of hard to see. I use for sewing, um, so it's super easy for me to go through here real quick, and I'm going to mark off my 20 inches because you want to be as accurate as possible with this project so that everything lines up properly. All right, so then I'm going to take my box cutter here. Make sure that the surface underneath of your foam board is something that you can cut into because you don't want to ruin your best dining table. Uh, so even putting another piece of cardboard underneath of it can also be helpful to protect your surface underneath. All right, there's my 20 by 20. So now I'm gonna do this for four of my pieces of foam board. Okay, so once you have your four sides that are all cut to the 20 inch to 20 inch, you wanna take your piece and we're gonna cut a, a square window on the inside where we're gonna tape the interfacing. Um, my fusible interfacing happens to be 15 inches by three yards. We're not gonna need that much, but at least the 15 inches width is what we wanna think about. So I have to at least make sure my window is smaller than that so that we have room to tape around the edges. So I am actually gonna measure out my window to be about three and a half wide. So I'm gonna take my ruler here and I'm just gonna mark that out. This is why I love the fabric ruler because it's clear. Um, so I can actually lay this out on my board. Another nice tool would be a um, one of those L-shaped rulers um, because that would also make for a more accurate measurement. So I'm gonna do this real quick. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that on there, but I've kind of cut or drawn a square in the middle. So now we're gonna cut that out. So now I have my three windows. We are going to attempt to put them together. So let's see how this works. So we're gonna take two of them edge by edge. Let's see how I can show you this. And then we are going to tape the backs together. And I'm going to use my masking tape for this. I'm gonna line them up the best that I can here. Let's see where the end of that is. just to make a clean line along the edge there. Okay, so that's what my finished product looks like. Now let's get the last one here. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna line them up along the edges. I like masking tape because you can kind of reposition it if you have to. I wouldn't recommend doing that too much, but at least if you make a mistake at first, you can slowly lift it up and then you can replace it. Okay. All right, so now we have these panels. And this is actually going to make up our top and our two sides. So let's get our bottom. <laughs> Fourth piece that 
we have not cut yet. And I'm gonna do the same thing. It's almost like a little assembly line going on here. So we're gonna put some masking tape on this last joint. So that we can have a solid base. Simply going to open over, and then we are going to figure out how to tape the last joint together. <laughs> Good question. All right, let's see what we can do here. before us. So I'm making this with you guys. So let's see how we can get that last corner together. I'm going to try to cover half of the edge here and then I'm going to fold it over and bring the other corner to it. Hope that made sense. So we're going to go up and over and into our box and I am going to to sandwich this together. This would probably be a good job for your kids to help you with. <laughs> or a husband. Just an extra set of hands might be handy here. All right, that worked pretty well. So there's our main box. So now we need something for support on the back. So there's two options for that. I'll set that to the side before I break it. Um, we can either reuse the pieces that we cut. So in that case, you would only need four pieces of foam board. And we can just tape these along the back side because you just want something that's going to keep it stable so that it doesn't get all wonky on you. So I'm going to see if I have some pieces that are big enough. I do. I think I'm just going to do that. Let's see what our longest pieces are. the back of your board is going to be covered by the poster board anyway um, to give you that clean backdrop so it's not really necessary um, to have a full back. So again I'm just going to use the masking tape. On both edges. set it on the inside so that it can be flat to the back and then I'm bending the masking tape over the edge. I'll show you what I did there. See that? So in that way, <laughs> there we go, you have something that gives it some support um, and I'm going to do one more in the back here as well. So there we have it, we have our support in the back and that's all we need. Okay, so the next step is going to be adding our interfacing. So this is going to cover the windows that we've created here so that we can shine our lights through the sides and if we want to through the top to add the appropriate type of lighting that we want for our uh, photography and whatever we're shooting. So let's open this up. 
you probably could get away with only having two yards of this, um, but just make sure it depends on the size of the box that you decide to make. Um, I am going to be selling some shoes and some larger items, so that's why I went with the 20 inch by 20 inch. But if you're just gonna be selling jewelry or some smaller items, you really could do a smaller version of this as well, and it would work just as well. So essentially, this is going to wrap all the way around. And we are gonna do the same thing and we are going to tape it in place. I'm just gonna use a few small pieces to put it in place. So we get the right alignment. Okay, so now that I have it gently placed, I'm gonna line the whole edges with the masking tape. So that is what one side looks like. Let me get the other ones done. Okay, so I got all of the interfacing around the edge of my box. As you can see here, I taped it and the top and the other side. So now what we need to do is cover up that crack in the back and also make sure we have a solid white surface on the inside. So we are gonna take our poster board and we are gonna cut it to the size of our box. So I'm gonna cut this one. I have to cut about two inches off the edge of it so that it will fit nicely on the inside here. So let's see if it will fit. And it's just gonna slide up into the back part of our box, just like that. And I'm actually gonna bring mine down just a little bit. So if you see how that brings a nice clean line in the back, there's no crispness in the back. It's just a solid, they call it an infinity backdrop. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna tape that into place. Right now I'm just gonna use a piece of masking tape, but I think I may change that to clear tape um, later on. So I can make sure it doesn't show up in my, in my pictures when I take them. Just like that. So you can see that there is no corner in the back. All right, so now we have to set up our lights. Okay, so that concludes the video on how to make your light box. I wanted to show you the placement of the lamps though. So I put my LED lamps in there and it's gonna go on the side of your box into where you have the interfacing on both sides. If you need additional lighting, you can get a third lamp and you can shine it in through the top. And you'll just have to play around with it because it also depends on the lighting you have in the room and the windows and things like that in terms of getting the perfect picture. I've also seen that you wanna play around with the picture sometimes on your camera app. Now there's specific apps for it, but I typically just use the regular camera on my iPhone. Um, and then I'm able to adjust the brightness and the exposure, and that will also help with getting that crisp white background. All right, guys, until next time, that's all I have for you today. Happy thrifting. Bye, Bye guys! guys.